Actually, I have a conversation with uh, Professor Tan, uh, previously. He, he has a deep industrial experience about the UX. And the successful U user experience, I learned it from the market, not from school. I publish, like, um, I have two companies. One is a Canadian company. I, I just came from, I was born in China, but I came from Toronto. And I have a Canadian company which published like 18 apps. And those apps for me is just a learning experience, the market. So to me, what is successful is not like only, you know, there are two kinds of successful apps. One is called spin-off, just like the job stakes, you know. Um, and that's lucky, that's a lottery. The other one is called operation. That means you can make money to sustain your own business. That's very important because um, you think you, what's the reality is, you think you have a great idea. After you publish the app, the first day it will let you down. Because the first day download is very important. But you will see if the lucky one you will get like 200 to 2000. If you are just like the app is not very decent or is, is not very lucky to get to that amount, maybe 10 to 20. So you will feel like, wow, that's such a, I spent a year with my friends, you know, right? To develop that thing, only 10 people download it. That's a reality. There, there are many reasons why that happened. It's not because your app is not good. That's not the major reason. The major reason is those big competitors out there is controlling the market. Marketing people are helping. You don't have any help. You are so popular. That's why it's very hard for you to survive in the reality. That's why I said I learned the, everything from the market. And we talk about the user experience. Actually, this, this term is really vague, you know, like user experience, what the heck is user experience? So I, I try to, uh, because my background have, have a, a lot with the traditional product, industrial product design, I, I actually my ceramic design, which I'll show, uh, show you guys later, is sold in Fifth Avenue and Chicago. So actually in the design field, I'm already relatively established in my age as a designer. But later, after I jump in the apps, I do have some apps like um, get the top ranking in the category. You don't expect, you know, like when we're talking about ranking, don't expect the top 10 is like in a general. That's a really hard to get to. So what you can do is get to the top 10 in the category, like productivity. And actually the ranking thing is really tricky. There are over maybe 60 countries app store. So when you're talking, you are top 10 in like productivity. You have to tell me which country. Maybe, you know, states, maybe Canada, or maybe uh, China. You know, those are major markets. Yeah, or all the Commonwealth countries like Australia or Singapore, you know. So, no matter what, if you can get to the top 10 in the category, that means your apps already operational. That's good. Good start. Okay. So, um, okay. Uh, briefly introduce myself. Um, I'm a tech entrepreneur. And why I call myself that? Because I do publish apps and I do know the entire flow and how to, you know, scale. Scale scalability is very important for you to think about. Even you just have a mind, have an idea. So I was born in Guangzhou, the southern China, and I, I go to the School of Art Institute, which Walt Disney graduated from that school, and in Chicago. Uh, and I, I joined uh, some film festival, my documentary, and my industrial design sell in Europe and, and the States, including Canada. And what I wanted to show the map here is not show off my, my experience. That's the localization. So when you're designing apps, you are designing for users. Users are from different countries. If I talk to you in Chinese, 我现在跟你说中文, do you understand? If I completely speak Chinese, you don't understand. But if you publish an app, okay? For example, the, the successful case is Evernote. They, um, the, the iPhone came out in 2008, right? And Evernote just arrived China in 2008. They have a Chinese brand. So later, they, so a lot of Chinese people think, wow, Evernote is a Chinese company. No, it's a Silicon Valley based. So when you are designing an app, localization is very important. Before 
you really jump into the de de development. Because like if you develop for the for different rates, the design the interface, the language, the reading style is different. Like Arabic, you know it's from that, like the language is read it this way, right? So the reading habit is different. How can some one app to fit in all those users? So if your app can be the top one, it must be very well designed. That's why the user interface, uh, user experience is very important. And why I do everything by myself? This is my Jewish teacher when I was in China, like 15 years ago. He's a Jewish reggae musician. Actually, he's, he's, he's from Switzerland. He, um, he's, do, he's doing very cool reggae band because he smoked weeds, you know, that kind of reggae people. In China, that's kind of you know, exotic with the local Sichuan uh, opera player, to, you know, the reggae with the fire thing. It's really cool, actually. And that guy just, you know, I met him as a sculptor and we, are, we, are, we, we feel each other are artists. So he, he turned out to be my teacher. So one day I saw him building his musician, uh, his music lab, music studio. He used, he, he doesn't have the interior design background, but he built his own kind of architecture model. And I said, wow, are you an interior architect? He said, no, I'm just a musician. But later he told me this, if you don't have money, you need to have a creative. And that drives me today to really do everything. Actually, it's possible to do everything by yourself, including coding. Does anyone recognize this brand? Girls? Girls should know. What's that? Hermes. Yep, Hermes. The most expensive uh, luxury brand for the lady handbag. What I want to mention about this. It's very pricey. A bag, you know, let me show you, for this price. Do you want to pay for it? This is just the price I, I searched average. They can go up to 40 grand for a bag. Your revenue for selling apps, one year you cannot practice that, if you are not angry. But why people pay this amount for this bag? A lot of people, it's, you know, you, you mentioned about uh, you Chinese people are, are rich, uh, uh, no, not like that, a lot of people buy this bag. Not only about it's well built. Actually, it's bulletproof. You know that? <laughs> yeah, it is. There, there is something happening. There is a case, but it's not only this brand. Like the LV is also uh, bulletproof. So it's really good if you have one. But why this one is really? I want to mention it as a sample. First, it's a hundred percent hand built. A lot of back like Coach. Like a lot of those uh, Michael Core, you know those cheap brand. I, I, I shouldn't call it cheap, but popular. If you compare with this, that's absolutely cheap, you know. But that's popular. Why? It's I, I, I chose this one. This is a hundred percent hand built. If you want to buy this bag, just like this model, I said, okay, I have this amount. My company spent off. I won't buy it. No, you can't yet. You have to wait for three to six months to get it. They build it for for you. A hundred percent hand built. That means quality. That's why it's really awesome. And I want to quote what Steve said, Steve Jobs. It's not just what it looks like. It's also about the product builds, how it works, feels like. You know, that's the user experience, how the product builds. You know, like if you build app, there are many ways to build app. You can use HTML5, you can use Objective-C, you can use other C-based language. But a lot of people, they, you know, the crap app, a lot of people, they think they can build it. They use template. Of course, you can get things, get a, a source code from the GitHub, right? The, the GitHub. You can do that kind of thing. You can do the markup. But what I want to say is, uh, because I, I use Objective-C to build, uh, build apps, so when you read no code from scratch to build it, it's different than you are using the template. And I heard about some guys, uh, there, there are some websites out there they have some sort of template. You can click next, 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 and your app get generated. That's 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 what I said. That's not 100% hand built. But of course, the hand built doesn't mean you have to. You every one of you have to build it by yourself. It's not necessarily. But you have to understand the mechanism. So that's why I want to use the brand Hermes. Built for human, experience for human, language for human. I will expect. Uh, I will exp uh, explain. Each of them. So you have to handle it user 
the, today's topic is called rethink user. User is human, right? Definitely. So you have to design things for human. What is not human? I will tell you later. Okay. Let me show you. This is the piece I did it in 2007. The iPhone didn't come out yet. It's an object. It's not Photoshop. Of course, the yellow background, I used the yellow paper to print. This is it's a, a real rock. I used the high temperature to burn the apple logo on it. It's some special kind of technique. But back in that time, I questioned. In 2007, there was no iPhone, but iPod is pretty popular. So back in that time, I'm thinking, wow, why is that so popular? What's the secret? What, how can I sell everything like iPod? That's the first time I questioned that. And what's interesting is, back in 2007, there was no app store. So no one can imagine, like today, there are uh, over... I heard about it's eight, 800k apps, or more than that. It's because it's generated more and more. So no one can expect that only in five, six years. That's why I said, you have to really learn to think ahead. And this is ceramic back in a long time ago, 2005. And, and as you can see, it's a real uh, porcelain thing that use a high temperature. The ceramic term is called cone 11, high temperature thing. And actually, I'm, uh, why I make this is Google China. You, you guys know Google China? Live China. You heard about that, right? They, they were kind of, um, because of the censorship. And before they quit China, I do this piece. I just want to question. If you don't understand the culture, if you cannot adapt into their own culture, how can you succeed? It, you know, Google is like, oh, wow, they are arrogant, you know, their <laughs> mountain view feels like a giant. But in front of Chinese market, they are not. There is another search engine like Google called Baidu. They quit, oh, cool, Baidu is really happy about it. So Google should quit. But because of their, they don't understand the culture, that's why they fail. That's why I said localization is a very complicated thing. You have to really think about it. This is also the same year I do the Intel inside. It's actually I cast from a pig's heart. <laughs> it's a real heart. I, I, I use ceramic to cast it. This is some of them. Um, and this is my industrial design project uh, covered by the Fast Company, the magazine, and by this uh, German prestige uh, National Geographic uh, magazine. Is I use the Tibetan prayer wheel to generate electricity. So I, I, I do have a background in research about alternative energy with the, uh, the American Energy uh, Agency. And why I talk about related to this piece, I, I, I do many different projects. Because the user experience, the first time I saw it directly, is the, the smile from this kid. What I did is, the, uh, this prayer wheel thing, when you spin it, it will power up some, something. So it's really happy. So once the user feels happy, they will laugh. They will be, oh, that's, they don't, the baby, they don't know the cool word, but from their heart, they know, oh, that's interesting. So that's the first time I learned from them is, okay, you have to enlighten people, make them feel happy. That's the best user experience. And this is uh, another ceramic piece. So you, you can tell I'm a ceramic designer in the past, and this was sold in the 5th Avenue with a gallery called Pagoda Red, and also in Chicago, so I can make money from that. But uh, I'm not really interested in stock in that level, so um, let's talk about, take a look at this. I don't want to I don't want to explain like Wikipedia, so I, I quote someone, what is user experience? Just a second, no, no. sorry. User experience is the science and art of designing a product like a website or software application so that it's easy to use, so that it fits the expectation that the user has for it, and so that it meets business goals. There's a whole methodology around designing a user experience, and sometimes people ask me, is it worth it to do all that work to design a user experience? So, yeah, so here there's a question. Is it worth it? 
Are you guys, um, I don't know you guys' background, so you guys think you are a designer or scientist? Or artist? Or just, uh, no, 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 student. <laughs> Everyone, including myself, I'm student. So you, I, so you guys are not computer scientists, right? It doesn't matter, just feel like you are somebody. It doesn't matter. Everybody is somebody. Okay, so you are not scientists. So for designer, do you think it's worth it to spend money, time for the user experience development? Like I have company, I have a, a meal. I can hire computer scientists, all kind of level programmer, and UX designer. This is a question for you guys. Is it worth it? Yeah, good. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> user. When I'm looking up, you know, from the this system, what is user? The first one attract me is the word soul. Okay? So when you design something, you design for soul. That's very but drug user is fun. Yeah, I don't know why they, they pop up that word. That's computer generated. It's not I I I I, I do what? Yeah, it's someone, somebody, person, more individual. Exactly. But so remember this word. Because Steve Jobs said that. Design the fundamental soul of a man-made creation. So he already realized that long time ago. How about you guys? So is the UI worth it or not? The UI, the UI UX design? Let's take a look at it. Next thing I learned is that design counts. Do you know who this guy is? Guy Kawasaki, who's the evangelist for Apple Computer. He, he helped to promote Apple Computer back in the 80s. So he's really an Apple guy, but now he betrayed Apple. He likes more Google. But that makes sense because Google is like, you know, doing a lot of cool things. So he's a marketing guy. Of course, he knows which one is better. But I didn't say Apple, but actually I really still like Apple a lot. But uh, this guy, uh, he gave a lot of lectures now in Stanford. So it's, uh, it's good to uh, look him up, called Guy G.Y. Kawasaki. In a world where everybody's talking about price, lots of people care about design. Lots of people do. And, and this is something that's probably contrary to what most experts will tell you. Most experts will tell you there's a price point and people are price, flex, uh, price sensitive and there's this you know, curve of demand and I think to a great degree Apple has disproved that. Uh, design counts. There is an element of people, maybe it's only 10% of the people, but 10% of the people truly care about design. So you should care about design. Don't put out crap. Uh, I have tried to enchant people with great stuff and I have tried to enchant people with crap. And let me tell you, it is a lot easier to enchant people with great stuff than crap. So, uh, you know, don't think of human interface and design as simply a, a, like a little layer on top of your great engineering algorithms. For what it is, it is the product for most people. It's not the great algorithm, it's the skin of it. Uh, that's what counts. Design truly does count. Steve Jobs has proven that five times. Macintosh, iPhone, iPod, iPad. Uh, you could make the case that many other companies could have done what he did. Starting with Xerox Park. But let's face it, you know, Steve understood, Steve had the vision, Steve had this ability to anticipate what customers need before they could articulate it. Design counts. Next thing I learned is that in your presentations, it's a very simple algorithm. Use big graphics and big font. It's probably contrary to most of your PowerPoint pieces. You're using 8, 10, or 12, right? And you're going to read your slide. And you're going to put up a competitive matrix. And there's going to be your column and your competitor's column. And guess what? Your column is going to be completely checked off. And your competitor's column is going to be full of holes. And that's going to be in an eight-point font, and no one can read it. You know, Steve Jobs puts up slides that have one word. He has slides that, you know, the, his minimum font size seems to be about 60 points. How many of you have slides with 60-point minimum font? Probably not many. Big graphics, big font. If you look at, go look at the, the archives of Steve Jobs' keynotes. Big graphics, big font. Eight-point font is... Out. 
Yeah, it's funny that because this is already a, he's not a designer, he's a marketer. He, he already talked about the impression of the experience of visual. But you know what's funny? The 60 points, that's like a general speaking. The real designer, like my teacher, who's a famous designer uh, called Bruce Mel, is a world reput reputable a graphic designer. He used the fonts like over 100, it's full <laughs> page. So it doesn't matter. What's the point is, you have to really have some sharp things to attract people when you're doing the UX. And why I mentioned, is it worth it or not? Because like, you know, for, for girls, you know, the good looking boys, you will tend to look at, look at him twice, right? So if you really design it at the first place, it will naturally attract more people to download, to look at it. That's a very simple thing. You can understand. So, what I want to say, UX is basically a human thing. You know what is not human thing? This. What's that? Binary. Exactly. Do you know what's the name of the binary? Also called machine code. So it's not human thing. So when you are coding with the Photoshop, when you are drawing pictures, it's generated by binary. When you are coding in Objective C, it's generated on this. So if you are hardcore enough, you can use this to write an app. But I don't suggest you to do so. But this is definitely anti-humanity, so don't do that. So what we are talking about here, the second part is the human language, human recognized language. Okay, it sounds kind of vague. Okay, let me show you. You guys, uh, any guys here watch Big Bang Theory? Yes. Okay, watch that episode, uh, this, this one with the Stephen Hawking before. Oh, so, come on, that was the first day with Hawking. <laughs> it was great. We talked about movies. Oh. <laughs> I showed him some card tricks. Oh. <laughs> He even let me read a couple pages from his new book. Oh. Something got you down there, monkey? <laughs> Howard, please, I'm begging you. Raj, sure, our group historian, has Sheldon ever begged before? Three times. He begged the Fox Network not to cancel Firefly. He begged the TNT Network to cancel Babylon 5. When he got food poisoning at the Rose Bowl Parade, he begged a deity he doesn't believe in to end his life quickly. <laughs> Do you understand how important Hawking is to me? When I was six years old, I dressed up as him for Halloween. <laughs> You're kidding. Well, no, sir. No, I took my dad's desk chair, attached a speaking spell to it, and made my sister push me up and down the block to trick or treat. <laughs> Granted, most people thought I was R2-D2, but still, I got a lot of candy. You don't seem to be understanding the English word no. It may be a different language will help. Russian, niet. Chinese, boo. Japanese, ea. Klingon, ko. Binary code in ASCII, 0111, 0111, It's actually 010111. <laughs> for me. I'm asking for Hawking. <laughs> Let me try gangsta. Hells no! So you see this? You can actually use binary code to communicate. I, I Actually, I have friends from uh, engineering uh, major. I talk to him, it's like, we talk about some philosophical thing, I'm kind of tired. So there are some online binary translator. You can type in the English words and we translate into Binary. And later I sent it to him. It's kind of geeky, but you can play that kind of trick. But that's not human language, just want to emphasize. So here, what is human? Back in the 2000s, uh, uh, 20, 30 years ago, when <coughs> Steve Jobs released his song. Oh, that's so awkward. <laughs> This is the launch of the Macintosh computer in 1984. But it's already a glimpse of the way Apple has marketed itself to the world ever since. The Macintosh 
was the first computer with a mouse that was meant for all of us. And it has turned out insanely great. Yeah, you know, what I want to point out is he did it like 30 years ago. What about now? You remember the, do you guys watch that, uh, the Microsoft released the Surface? Those presentations are really boring to me. And of course their technology is cool, a lot of cool technology. But what I'm saying is really intuitive back in that time. Do you know how hard is it for that generation to imagine a graphic thing show up? So what's so interesting is scientists make simple things complicated. Artists make complicated things simple and intuitive. So why talk about that user experience? That's very good simple. Intuitive. And look at it. It's quite similar as nowadays Photoshop still, right? The structure. Just more complicated, more pixelized, right? More fine. <coughs> but everything is like getting finer and finer. But already the layout, the wireframe, everything is out there, the structure. So if you're doing something classic, it can just like art, a classic art piece can remain for hundreds of years. Why not? This can be a if Andy Warhol paint this, this will be another painting. You guys know Andy Warhol, right? Okay? And this is not very humanized. I use that. I grew up in dogs. Microsoft dogs. Anyone use this before? Cool. So I I the I I, I, I use this to to really learn my coding like when I was 10 in this. Uh, what I did is I will show the image later. It's like using the notepad. You just type in EPIT, the file, it will open as TXT, I code it, and I, uh, I close it and save it as a EXT, it will be, become an app. But look at the computer here. It's a shitty computer with shitty systems. <laughs> yeah, that's how I want it. And later, of course, they are smart. They, you know, that they, uh, Steve Jobs tell him about the Apple using the Xerox interface thing, and they are so smart to copy. And actually, all this icon, they, uh, it's the same design. Like Called Susan Kerr. You guys heard of this, this designer before? She's the one who designed this logo, this icon. Actually, all the Mac classic icon was designed by her. And look at this, you can read all this. This one is still, I, I saw it still in, in Adobe software, right? Any software. Yeah. But she's the one who also designed the, the Windows one. So you can see, it's not. The user interface designer, she designed both companies. But why Apple's you know, user experience is better? Until today, it's still better. Even Windows released the RT of Windows 8. And this is the sketch. She just designed things like that. And this one is my favorite, called Debug. It's really cute, very simple, but you can, you can see the bug here, right? So when people like, talking about using what kind of software to design. It doesn't really matter. It's what matters is your taste. It's not what software you use. You can use, you know, like you do coding, you can use all kinds of things to do the coding. You can even use the Illustrator to finish the UI and apply on the interface builder in Xcode. But the taste thing, you cannot change it. Because these kind of icon things make you feel happy. And what's more important is the the CEO who designed it to use this icon instead of using other not cool icon. Okay. So Richard Branson has a very good saying: a business is simply an idea to make other people's lives better. I, I change it into UX design, user experience design, simply an interface to make other people's lives better. Do you, do you want to know what's the you know how to make other people live in a miserable way? Is this? Tell me what is it? You can tell it's elevator, right? But every time you enter elevator, sometimes I will click this button or this button, you know. <laughs> that's a terrible experience. But that, if you think that's not bad enough, let me show you a sample from the restaurant. Good. Yep, it's a Thai restaurant. Actually, if you want to see this kind of sample, there is a very good website called Good UX. BigBadUX.com They have this sample. So um, let's talk about a little bit of the app design. How many people have really do an app before? I mean, publish. 
Oh yeah, but who's working on it now? Uh, okay, so um, are you guys doing the coding process or? We're all working on it actually. Okay. Let's do the design. Okay, cool. It doesn't matter because, um, yeah, step by step. You know, in 2009, actually I started coding in 2009. 2009 to 2011, doing the app is a very cool thing. It's really new. But 2000, up to 2012, that's not cool anymore. Unless your app is super powerful and designed super cool. So it's really competitive nowadays in the app market. And because of a lot of way to do it, like I mentioned before, you can use template to generate apps. That's terrible. But a lot of people, like some marketing company, they, they, make, you, they can help a photographer to build a photo app, you know? just by uploading photos, they can do that. And I met some company, some startup meeting in Canada. They already did that. They, they are raising funds for that kind of projects. So in future, there are more and more competitors with you guys. But why you guys can survive? Because you guys understand UX. That's why from the very first slide, I talk about hand -built. You really design things from scratch. You know, like they talk about human user is soul. You design from heart. That's very different. So app design is still worth it. Why? Let me talk about four kind of apps. The top one, cool, neat, and useful. Top ten apps or top twenty apps in general category. Most of them, most of them, but not all of them, are cool, neat, and useful. Like of course you need Twitter, you need Pinterest, you need Instagram, you need Yelp. The user interface is not bad at all, and they are useful. That's called the first one, the enjoyable. What's the proficiency one? It's useful, entertaining, but the UI are not really interesting. But what is useful or entertaining, <coughs> very useful, is like banking apps. You don't care if Wells Fargo app looks really cool. You don't care about Citibank app, you just want to deposit it you check by a button, so you don't care about those. But those are really useful, okay? So those belong to the diff uh, second category, proficiency. Like the tax, turbo tax, you know? Of course, if they are, they are, their CEO have good taste, they will hire you guys to do very good design. But if they don't care, as long as they are very useful, then it's fine. The third category is useful, but not very cool. You know that, it's like the top 1,000. You can see a lot of that kind of apps. But the fourth one, anyone know this casino game? Just two dice, dice like throw your away. Craps. Craps. <laughs> I don't want to offend a lot of developers, including myself. So I call it craps. You know. <laughs> so no offense. <laughs> but actually, that's really a problem. You know, most of the people. Including myself, I have an app fit in this category. Of course, everyone has an app fit in that category. But that doesn't matter. Everybody, you know, artists start from amateur, just like me. I, I, I do love coding, but I, I wasn't, you know, go to the computer science major. Oh, I know some people who's engineering background, computer science background. They know how to code a loop, you know. They, they know how to make something like the teacher told them, but they can't really make an app. Make an app, even a hollow world, <coughs> is something. Because you dare to make it, you dare to build it, you dare to publish it. Of course, you have to face Apple who definitely reject your app today. So if you publish apps, you have to look, look at apples like they have some limitation, like no fart apps, no hollow world, they have no flashlight app, okay? But you can play with it yourself. You know, they, they have a module, it's called... It's a module you can share with your friends. So you can definitely not publish, but still share with 50 people or 100 people, I don't remember. But you can definitely share that, but just you don't have an opportunity to publish that. But I have a question is, do you, do you guys notice the PC thing is kind of dying? Actually recently, all the big corporations like Dell, HP, Asus, they are, this quarter, their sales are, 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 are minus. 
But only one company is going up, it's Lenovo. But Lenovo is uh, selling in a very competitive price. That's why they can still going up. But that reflects something. That's, this is talking about the capital. Alex, this is pretty significant, the shift. It is, Benny. It's a trend that we've been watching that has really turned analysts against PC makers, but now it's confirmed. So this chart shows fourth quarter shipments of worldwide tablets like Apple's iPads and some Galaxy tabs are overtaking <coughs> PCs for the first time. Now, Citigroup has said this trend has really taken hold as tablets cost about one third as much as PCs do, and they pretty much do many of the same things, right? You can get on the internet, watch videos, access Facebook and Twitter, and tablets on the whole should get even cheaper in the second half of the year as lower price options hit the market. Amazon and Google sell devices at cost, and lesser known brands opt for rate cuts, cutting rates in order to compete. Now at the same time, Global PC sales, Betty, continue their downtrend. We heard yesterday from researcher IDC that shipments in the last quarter fell 14%, triggering a slew of downgrades for PC makers like Microsoft, Betty. So, Alex, what is the market that's really driving this growth for tablets? Well, a big part of it is actually coming from emerging markets, which tend to favor less expensive products. Citigroup says this is the first time that buyers are actually opting for tablets in developing countries instead of PCs, and companies don't necessarily break out smartphone versus tablet shipments, but if you do take a look at fourth quarter, Asia bought 46% of handsets worldwide, and IDC thinks tablet shipments could hit as high as 236 million next year, trumping PCs with iPads and products running on Google's Android, capturing a whopping 92% of the market share, Betty. Yep, so you guys kind of know, even the app thing, is is kind of popular now. That's why I call it. It's not that cool anymore, but still have a gigantic market because even PC is still not that. So you guys can still really work working hard on it, but you have to really work real hard on it. Just like any startup, they fail 80 percent, 90 percent. And if you join them, you have to really work hard on the apps, including the innovation and. I don't know if you noticed when they try to show the, the Android model here. They try to take a look at it again. It's so funny. Market Amazon and Google sell devices at cost, and lesser-known brands opt for rate cuts, cutting rates in order to. You see, it's not really smooth. That's a problem. I do have all kind of product. You know, I don't have iPhone five. But I have Apple Touch. I have an iPhone. iPhone four. I have iPad, and I have a Galaxy S three. I try to study all of different. Interface actually is really different. I'll talk about it later. So, but you can see. So, when you're doing the app thing, you cannot really generally design for one thing to to use it for an app. Or like you can use HTML5 to do code an app. But the user experience for two different phone, phones is completely different. Even a tablet. So now I'm going to show you. This, uh, this I, I just wrote this yesterday. It's my according to my experience. How to develop an app? There are, uh, it's too small. I'm sorry, because uh, because the thing uh, is really a lot of process. I read it. The first thing here is idea, brainstorming, vision. So that's very first step. And you guys belong to here. You are UX stage. In this stage, we'll talk about it later. And the function defined. This is really a programmer process. So, uh, like when I'm working with the uh, programmers, I, I, I have a team in Canada and in India actually, and I have to talk about different kind of uh, working style. One is called waterfall. That's like big corporation refer to that. What's that? It's like I have a schedule. I want to do a Wells Fargo app. Okay, I define all the functions in detail, and later I just hand it to the programmer. The programmer will code it accordingly, and they will give you an app in six months. But uh, but now I prefer using the edge models. That's very popular and very actually it's already ten years they have a called and manifesto for right? agility or something. Uh, but agile basically is is more efficient. So you are working with programmer like back and forth. Like I have an idea. I'm coding. Uh, I'm I'm coding for the interface, and I I talk to the programmer if he can make it, and we try to work as a team. And back and forth, back and forth, that's called um, Agile. And actually, in Agile, you need a very good backlog system. So you need a Scrum Master. Scrum Master basically is like a manager, a manager who understands the whole thing. So he has to 
you know, to check everything. So you have to make here a burn down chart, like for a month, like I'm working with someone now, and there is a burn down chart, we have mission, very clear. We have to get it done, step by step. And because some apps, you are not even sure what you want to build. Like, okay, you guys want to build another Instagram, that's fine. But when you're building it, you will find a lot of the other Instagrams apps are extreme simple. You are doing one of them. So you are changing your mind. But programmers really hate that. Because one code, you just want hide this button. There's fine lines on it. So you have to really, the waterfall thing is really easy for them because you write it clearly. But you cannot be so sure because six months, things will change rapidly. Like I'm working on, on, on an app now and later after, I, because some other reasons I'm working on something else. After a month I feel like I don't want to push it anymore. I just want to delete it, even redesign it because there are so many other apps coming out at the same time. Just like the Sony, you guys heard of, of that guy? The same Sony. It's a 17 years old, uh, a, a, British, a British guy, yeah right? He worked on that like um, just five months ago. If you're thinking the same way, you already acquired by Yahoo, yeah. So you have to re really work hard on it. And the other thing is the marketing stage. As in, uh, because I'm an app developer, so I really think of all these things. You don't have to think about all, all of them. But it's good if you one day you start your own company. You want to be a startup. Your startup is real hard. A lot of people are telling you about gold benefits, actually all those are really like a picture, you know, just like a mirage. For you, that's like drive a boat to go to the ocean, are you sure? Now I don't have a, now I am already in the middle of the ocean. I gotta go back. If I go back, I find a job. Of course, that, that would be a safe plan. But, so before you really thinking about doing a startup, you have to really be sure you want to do that. If you want to do that, you have to understand all this. I learned all this from market, not from, you know, not from school. And marketing stage is very important from the beginning. Like when you are designing the, like the, anyone drive a Mini Cooper here? Actually, my fiance, she's driving one. Mini Cooper's interface is really cool. The engine, of course, is BMW, it's cool. The price is not very pricey. It's really reasonable. The design is cool. Uh, Mini Cooper inside is really spacious. So it's really good design. So the designer, when they are designing Mini Cooper, they think about how to promote Mini Cooper. That's very important. So when you're designing an app, just like any apps, you have to think about how you can sell it. It's not how you can design it. Design is easy. Why? Because once you know how can you sell it, you know how to design it. If you don't even know how to design it, you are just building something like in the fourth category, the crafts game, you know? You're just throwing out to the market and test it. Of course, it's, it makes sense because you don't know. You, you guys are, are still 20 something, right? or even below 20 or around 20, uh, under 30. So you still have time to really test in the market, to learn. I publish a lot of apps, it's not because, of course I want to make some money, a lot of reasons, but one thing is important is I do different things to learn from the market. So when you're doing apps, don't really learn from the mentor. The mentor can really tell you something like spiritually, but when you are going to the app, the mentor cannot control. Just like a lot of people tell you, hey, buy this, buy the Facebook stocks. It will go up because they release the Facebook home. But these two days, if you really read the, uh, I have the Facebook phone, uh, home already installed on my Samsung Galaxy S3. The one star rating of one million people. The five star still have one million people. But the two, three, four star, um, different, you know, 50, uh, 500 grand people. But bad rating, that means a lot of people are unsatisfied or dislike whatever. That means the stock won't go up. That means the user experience is not very, cannot convince the market. Let's, I, I didn't, you, you guys, if you are online, you can type in Google FB, you can see if they're going up. If they're going up, okay, that's good for them. So, the marketing thing, you know, when you're doing marketing, like me, I like to think about YouTube. You have to think about how to demo, demonstrate your products. So as a CEO or user interface, user interface designer, UX designer, you have to explain to your supervisor. Your CEO, you have to respond to the customer. So YouTube, you have to think about how to make a video. 
And uh, like the search engine optimizations, if you guys are web guy, you know that quite well. And that's the side on the right. The left side is about coding. The coding thing is kind of complicated. Of course, you know that's complicated. But what's really complicated is debugging. Because you, you didn't finish the app, you don't know how many bugs are. When you're using them, even you, you click the, in, in any software, like the, for programming, you click the build, it will build it up. It will compile all the code into the machine code. After it compiles, it will set successfully build. So you cannot see any bug. But once you click next, or something go back, it crash. There is a bug. Some bugs is not very, you know, fatal, that's fine. If you are really user-based, like you are creating an app, people need to log in to use it, and you crash for two times your app, what will happen, you guys know? Delete. You guys will delete it. I don't use it anymore. Unless it's well far away. What will you do? You will go to the rating and say, this piece of shit, waste <laughs> my time. That's really horrible. You know, so debugging is very hard for in the coding. And the other thing is the updating stage. For Apple, it's really hard. Google is easier. Google Play, you can push the thing once you update it. But the Apple thing, like I have found a bug. A month ago, I spent another month to refine it. And I find it. Click, upload it, update it. It will fade away for another 7 to 14 days after Apple approve it. After Apple approve it, you have to click release it. Release it, it takes 4 hours to 24 hours, or maybe a lucky guy will be 48 hours to get refreshed. And after your app, app get refreshed, all the other, you know, because if your app is popular, all the other app store like those, you know, a lot of associated with, they will introduce your app. Those, they, they need another 48 hours. So it really kind of, some things a long term, long duration. So the updating stage is really hard as well. Of course, the maintenance stage is also very hard. Like you are doing the app, you are using the Amazon server. So you have to think about the users, you know, like the user recently, they violate your, your using your, your thing. They just keep sending a lot of big files. They make your server or crash or overload, but you only pay Amazon some limited fee. So Amazon stops servers or anything. The maintenance is also very hard. So when you are, you guys are teaming up, a lot of issues. That's what I really face. That's why I wrote it all this by, by hand. I, I didn't download the same image. Okay, so when we're talking about this, we have to talk about API. Anyone know what is API? Programming interface. And you, you are, you already know. So what's the difference between application programming interface and you? It's a completely different thing, but sounds very really simple, interface, okay? But why I mentioned API, you don't really have, have, need to handle API, but API is something really, really important. One day, once you are the, the startup CEO, you will understand. This is Wikipedia stuff, I hate it. An application program interface is a protocol, okay, protocol, intended to be used as an interface by software component community with each other. That doesn't exist long time ago. Okay, that only exists in the in, in it really get popular recently. But it's a protocol. Okay, that's what we know about it. This is a watch. That's why I want to make a you know reference. You know what's this? That's a dial. If you are an industrial designing watch, you know there is a dial plate designer, dial designer. How do you call this part? The hard part here. Movement. So movement design is different. I have a friend who works in Piaget, the luxury um, watch brand design. Actually, I asked him what kind of thing. He actually focused on the watch. So when you're talking about watch, it's about the interface. It's about everything outside you can see. That's the dial, or maybe you can the movement design, uh, or the the watch band design. That's other things. But that's about the UI thing. And what's the movement here is the hard part. So this diagram tells more clearly. So you guys are doing all this user experience. Unless you are a watch connoisseur or a watch connect, uh, collector, you don't really care if the hard. Of course you want to ask, I spend 100 
or maybe 500k to buy a uh, AP watch called Augment, um, I don't know, the AP, the German watch, or the Piaget, they are very pricey. You would care if the, the movement is Switzerland made, a Switzerland design. You know, like Swatch, a lot of the design in Switzerland, uh, I don't know if their heart is the, the movement is really designed in, built in Switzerland, maybe built in China. So actually China build very good products, but you pay shitty price, you get shitty products. If you pay a lot of pay a high price, you can get an iPhone which is still built in China. But what I want to say is about the interface thing. So if you are really a guru in user experience and user interface, you can think about it, really focus on the user experience of the watch. So when you are going to the watch store, you'll pay 300 or 500 bucks for a watch, you really care about the design. Other people do the same thing. So does design matter or does design count? Definitely. But um, that's what you have to work hard on. Okay. This, this is an interview. Look at him. He's the CEO and chairman of Pixel. It's not Apple. So he left Apple. But this is the video before he go back to Apple to do the iPod. It first came to public attention with Apple. In recent weeks, it's been one of the failure stories of Wall Street and the of the American economy. What went wrong in Apple? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, Apple hadn't been there a long time. My perception We won't is, blame you for what's happened in the last 10 years. Yeah, no, I mean, my perception <laughs> may not be complete. But uh, from the way I see it, I mean, Apple was a company that was based on innovation. When I left Apple 10 years ago, we, we were 10 years ahead of anybody else. It took Microsoft 10 years to copy Windows. The problem was is that, that Apple stood still. Even though it invested cumulatively billions in R&D, the output has not been there. And people have caught up with it, and its differentiation has, has eroded, in particular with respect to Microsoft. And so the way out for Apple, and I still think Apple has a future. Uh, there's some awfully good people there, and there's a tremendous brand loyalty to that company. I think the way out is not to slash and burn, it's to innovate. That's how Apple got to its glory, and I think that's how Apple could return to it. Next, which is your private venture, specializes in what's called object-based software. Could you explain that to someone who's not a computer nerd? Sure. Um, the way... <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's... I will let you do, listen to it later. Why? That's the API thing. That's SDK, Software Development, the development Kit. Back in that time, everybody, you know, actually he is not really care about Windows. Windows is all, Microsoft is already very big. And he's thinking about, when everybody's coding like that, he's thinking about what? How can I build something to make other people code easy? That's why he's amazing. That we, most people still build software today. Uh, they build, everything's custom. Everything's built by hand and everything's custom. There's no ability to reuse software that you had written prior or that somebody else had written. And objects are a way to basically allow people to reuse software an order of magnitude or two more efficiently than they can today. It's sort of the industrial revolution of software. Is this on a grander scale the equivalent of calling up a macro on the computer? Uh, it's even much beyond that. It's sort of interchangeable parts, much like the industrial revolution brought to, to, to the manufacturing of hard goods. Industrial revolution. Think about it. What are you doing, right? Industrial revolution. So why he can really create something extraordinary? There is a reason. Like ten years. This is nineties video. Okay, he spent ten years to refine the iOS. Uh, back in that time, it's the OS. Okay, and they, you know, they, they create a software called Xcode for you to code it. But oh, as I said, you can use all kinds of software, if you like. Like uh, Microsoft, they hired the founder of Python to work in, oh uh, no, the Google, to work in Google. So actually, like a lot of people using Ruby, all kinds of uh, programming language. It doesn't matter. If you are hardcore enough, you can create a programming language. language. But what he said is so important, is object-based. So now when you're talking to the programmer, you have to talk about object, okay? Like in Xcode, in the face builder, you, you have all kind of object and drag. Well, of course, 
I, today, I, I don't really want to get into too much about the coding thing, but when you are using the user interface builder, like you purely use the visual thing, you can do a lot of things. But co why coding is still very important. Uh, you don't have to really know it, but you have to understand some functions. Only coding can do it better. Like, you, have, you want to pop up something on something, then you cannot use it. Uh, uh, you know, not like Photoshop, you can put a layer and layer. But coding, you can definitely layer. So when I code like from view did load, the app load and it will load automatically what you design. But if you want something bit, bit uh, you know, ahead, you can code it. That will pop up too late. So if you know more about those, you can make very fancy. So that's why I wanna call the Steve Jobs about the object based thing. And let's go back to the UI. When you're talking about UX, UX is always associated with UI. And the UI, the first one, which is very fun, called command line interface. I don't even count that as interface, but actually command line as interface, like Amazon OS, that kind of thing. Graphical user interface, menu driven interface. So interface already have different interface. So when you are designing something, you can really think about different kind of strategy to show your product. Does anyone know this artist? Yeah. Oh, wow. you are the best artist. <laughs> you, you guys don't take any art back in the cross, right? You did. That's cool. He's, you know, look at his, you know, he was born in 1872, but he's the early artist back in that time. It's like the neoclassicism, like a lot of, you know, fine naked body, that kind of paintings, you know. French revolutionary, a naked woman, hold a flag, that kind of thing, back in that time, a little bit earlier, but around that age, that generation. It's a Dutch painter. He's the father of wireframe. You guys do wireframe? Yeah? He's the father. So, you can see, if you are doing, that's why I related to the first slide, like Hermes. Why Hermes can sell 20 grand for a bag? Design counts. Your taste counts. Okay? If you design something, you using just like everybody can uh, who attended a you know some sort of uh, public class or YouTube class. I learned a lot of things from YouTube, but taste cannot be easily learned. That's like part of your education, part of the self self kind of uh, inspiration thing. So you have to realize how important art to you. So if you are talking about if you are not a scientist, then what are you? You are designer. Your artist, then I count you as artist. So you really have to really think about if you can do really good taste, graphic, or user experience things. So look at this name, uh, Pierre Montrian, I don't know how to read the, the Dutch name, but actually you can make some cool interface like that. And this is a funny thing, you can try to play with it. To a wireframe. This is alternative, childish, but it can be very effective. I don't like this too so. But a lot of people who use iPhone, they are actually middle class people. What does that mean? They have a lot of money and time spending on art. So if you have good taste, you can definitely attract their download. If you don't have good taste, of course you can develop for you know like some other platforms which uh, you know the people came off for iPhone they will use. I don't mean they don't have taste, but of course more people will download it. Why I like this kind of thing is like if you are a painter, you attend some art class. I give you a white canvas. What can you do with a white canvas, right? You want to, to me, every time I start an app, it's really interesting because when you click the new project, it will just automatically let you choose what kind of new project you want to design. 
a manual driven or a navigation driven or white page. So it's really like the experience design app is really like design and painting. So when you don't have a clue, go to museum SF Moment. Of course, the California here, the cultural atmosphere is not like New York. So if you go to New York, definitely check out the MoMA and the new museum. That's why I really want to mention about how important creative direction, artistic direction to you is very important. Actually, that affects your business. Like a lot of billionaires, what will they do? They will go to an art auction to buy some painting. But coincidentally, you wanna you are building an app for him, and he has a painting like Montreal. You build an app which inspire him like that. You can get a contract. So does that matter to you? If you are some some important designer, that that's definitely important to you. But if you don't count, you are just like I'm just a, a guy who get paid, you know, like a. A eighty grand per year and do the job. It's fine. No one will blame you. That's why it's awesome to get a job in corporation, because you just need to hand in a job. If the because so many people like Google, they have seventy two thousand people globally working for them. If you say, hey, you are a cool designer, I said, oh, I have this idea. Who cares? They don't even care. Your creative director, you know, even. Didn't care, but for you, if you're doing startup or you're working small company, a lot of people. If you want to find jobs in Google, it's really hard, but that's still possible. But if you want to work in a lot of startup, it's also very hard. Why? Because they can pay you the amount. They will squeeze. They want you to be the top. So the taste. Look at all those top apps. They have to take like the recent popular Vine. Anyone needs Vine? Vine one, the green one. The, the, okay, download it. Check it out. Called VIA on iOS. You can record five second uh, animation, and and is is acquired by uh, Twitter. Actually, company was only three people, but definitely they, they are. I remember it's New York based. Their color. Look at the logo's color. The color is really nice. The green. It's not the ugly green. It's really nice, elegant green. A little bit like Tiffany. You know Tiffany is very expensive, right? Tiffany is blue. They are kind of like the Tiffany color and a little bit yellow. So that's about it. So when people are like Bloomberg, the uh, television, every time they introduce someone, some some companies, some CEOs or some products, it's always look at them. They are all good-looking CEO, good-looking products. But it doesn't matter if your your you the, your outlook is doesn't matter, but your products does matter. So design counts. Okay, and this is the app you can download. Uh, I just released it a couple of days ago called Duo Note, Days of Our Lives. And this is an app. I uh, actually uh, if I uh, I will introduce the other app. I I pretty did. This one I uh, is my I register my company in the states in California called Divu Data Incorporation. Divu Data sounds really fun to me, Divu Data, but I like the data. The data is like because this age is a big data data age, but um, I, I don't want to call it you know Divu Data, so I call it Divu Data. Data is also an avant-garde movement. Right? Dadaism, have you heard of it? Yeah. Dadaism is really avant-garde. Duchamp is the the pioneer. They do very cool stuff back in a hundred years ago. So I really like back in that age, and I created this app. What does this app do? Okay, this is the major interface. Um, I I I have I, I used to be a, a, a associate editor in chief in an art magazine called Dao Shu. Uh, actually, it's a Chinese national uh, publication about the contemporary sculpture and uh, installation, that kind of art. Uh, large scale projects, that kind of thing. I'm an associate editor in chief, so I have experience in publishing. I'm still very interested in publishing business, but nowadays everybody is a publisher, including everyone here sitting here. You guys are publishing. You publish on Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram. You are publishing. But to me, I, I I'm also a news reader. I like to read news. I like to read all kind of news. Every day I spend a lot of time reading all kind of news. I, I feel I don't I don't really use Instagram, you know, maybe I'm a little bit old for that. Uh, but I really like to read news. So 
But there are CNN, B, BBC, Bloomberg, they have all their apps. But I don't want to click, click, click each of them. And Facebook, they create a home. They think they integrate everything. But to me, I'm a small startup, you know. I kind of do like Facebook home. I look at the Facebook home, wow, their algorithm is really nice. Of course, I didn't see the code, I can't see. But when you are using it, you know, wow, how, how they really work on the interface is not that easy. Use it. The code is really awesome, beautiful. But, um, but this one, I do simple things. I just forge a little button here. So if you're using I, 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 iPhone 5, it, it works better on iPhone 5 or DOL, you can download it. Uh, it, will, it will pop up all these kind of uh, little links. So you can just scroll it and use it very happy, easy. And, that, uh, and because my background has art, I can definitely draw on that. So it's when you see a good idea. Like I, I always have some sort of uh, ideas when I'm looking at news. So my app designed for myself first. I'm the first user of my own app. So I designed it for myself first. So I can write down my idea, I can draw out the news on it directly, I can share it. Of course, if I publish this app back in 2008, I'm a billionaire now. Because, you know, now it's a little late for a no, because every no is already very big, but it doesn't matter. Don't think your app, the first app of yours, your first app will, will spin off like that. It's not easy. Facebook created in 2002, right? They go to IPO this the last year, right? So 10 years. Of course, they, they the day one, they already a lot of download. That's very successful. Of course, no one can deny that. But don't imagine if you make an app, you can get viral like one day. It's not that easy. Operation is also very important. So I make a, like you remember I told you, the day one, you have to make a, think about how to promote your app. So I make a demo, take a look. That's, a pop, that's why you guys have to really hard to be the top UX designer. I, I, I'm not, you know, Google, I can spend a lot of money. I, I didn't back by Richard Branson. So I have to do everything by myself. But meanwhile, you still have to care about everything. Like, it's, it, it's okay if you hire somebody to do it. You know, I could hire somebody. But what's the problem? I, I have guys work for me from UC Berkeley. You know, I have every, every kind of work for me on different things. But why I don't let them do it sometimes is they don't have good taste. Or they don't have capability to make my ideas come true. They just like make something very far from what I need. I hate that. That's why originally I want to hire somebody. My first app, my very first app, the mobile apps, I, I did hire somebody. But once they hand it to me, they said, okay, that's what I can do. I said, what? And later I said, if you want to do more complicated like what you said, you have to add money. You know why he asked that? It's, it's because he's not capable. And I try, try to hire different people. They're just not capable of doing it. That really pissed me off. And, and I do have time. You know, I, one thing I don't really like is to... 
I really would like to spend time in refining my resume. That's stupid. To, to write my good resume. Hey, this is my resume. I, I don't like to do that from the beginning. That's why I have time to do things I like. That's why I do all this. I, I, use, I, I edit this in Final Cut Pro. Yeah? And the music uh, is absolute royalty free, so I don't have any issue. So when you're doing things, you have to consider once this thing goes to the public, like to YouTube, you use some, some you know, like the music like the yeah, Yam or some, you know, Marco, Marco Moore, those kind of music, you guess through. So you, it's really hard. You find the right music, the right background, the right color, the right style, the right marketing, marketing strategy, the right slogan, and the right name for your products. I call Duo Browser. Now I change it to Duo Note. Actually, I want to focus on is doing a note, a browser, a lot of browser out there. Duo is days of our lives. So, yeah, this is kind of marketing strategy. So, day one, you have to know what you are going to promote, what you are going to build. And this is by a Canadian uh, company called Inside Bell Art of Technology. And I'm, uh, this, actually, uh, why I call it, um, I'm not a serial entrepreneur. I don't want to call it, what is serial entrepreneur? Somebody who created a company and, and sell it, and you are serial. I didn't sell it. <laughs> I hope I can maybe, I don't want to sell it, I want people to buy it. Sell it is a negative word. So, but I call it uh, tech entrepreneur, you know, two times. Because I do a complete a Canadian company and, and a American company, so I run it too. Uh, some of them I hire people to do it, and some of them I don't. Uh, I do it myself, you know, some, some apps related to gaming, so I don't want to mention a lot about it. With a, you know, it's a, it's a adult gaming thing. <laughs> this is the app I did uh, called SketchStorm. You guys can definitely download it. Um, actually, uh, it's 99 cents, but I bring you guys some promotional code, so you don't have to pay. You just type in the code if you have iPad, so you can download it for free. And uh, this one, I created this app for artists actually, and architect. Uh, because here I integrate a map. You know what to like for artists? I don't know, because you guys, maybe you are not art major. For artists, sometimes they like to go to somewhere to draw something. You want to tell people where are you, right? So you need the location, you do need the location. And uh, this is an old map, I get it. I, I, get, I don't have time really update this version, so it's still the 2012 version. But uh, to artists, uh, it's not okay to do it. You can also search the things you want to draw or you want to get you inspired. So I do everything. You know, the first uh, prototype is for myself. Sometimes I have an idea. I want to draw it. I want to think about, do the research, what other people are doing. So here, um, in, uh, I, I, I embed a, a search engine. So you can search things while you are thinking. Uh, this is the major user, dif uh, user experience difference between uh, iOS and Android. Android is open source, so they can do the you know multitask, but uh, good, good and bad. You know, iOS they cannot do it. But for people who's not computer geek or who's not savvy in computer, iOS is develop, uh, developed designed for everybody. So that's amazing. Android is for people who really like to play something crazy, like, like you know, hack into your own phone to do something, you know, that's for Android. So, when you are designing for iOS, the multitask thing, you can think about it. When you're designing for Android, the algorithm, the structure is different. So, don't really think about it in general. You can think about the layout in general, but the function and, and the reality is completely different. And of course, um, uh, it's also a practice for me to learn how to code. Like you can draw a line, what kind of line, and how to embed a camera, how to use the SDK. That's why I want to mention how great is Steve Jobs. Before Steve Jobs create his own kind of object-based language, you ask me to code everything. Code everything. That's a terrible experience. Like okay, first you plot up a square of the interface. And then you pop up this bar, and all the code you define the size of that, and later all the little button, how you know how many percentage of the width, you know you can code all of them. But for use use user interface design, it's really hard because how do you know? How do you know how many buttons, right? But um, why coding is 
useful for UX is sometimes you develop for universal app. In uh, when you are coding for iOS, it will ask you if you are designed for iPhone or iPad or universal. If you are designed for universal, using code is easier. Okay, this one is uh, like okay here, like the landscape uh, mode. This one is in the center, so the percentage is like how many of them you can just set it up. When it pop up to the uh, iPhone, it will be the same percentage. Just shrink. Uh, but when you are doing the completely, uh, you want to completely customize, the code doesn't really work well. But uh, later, if you have iPad, you can come here to ask for a demo code. And this is my Facebook society. You can go, you can, you can go there to, to, to like it. Well, of course, I hope you guys can like it. It's called SketchStorm Idea Incubator Community. Just type in SketchStorm Idea. You can, you can find, find it. I try to, I have added, added uh, you know, from MIT, uh, in Media Lab, he he's, ha, has very good taste, he helps me to post something from it, you know, if he saw some cool things, I try to have different kind of editors to post some artistic, innovation, scientific, uh, breakthrough, everything here, just, you know, a, a community for art and science, I like art and technology. So just search the sketch storm idea. This is the first application I did software 20 years ago. In the <laughs> back in that time, I use uh, that that definitely changed my life. But uh, back in that time, because Windows sucks, I don't I don't really like to be a programmer. I don't really like computer science. I, I don't just have interest because it looks terrible, and I don't think I can do anything about it. So I learned coding, the first software I code. I'm 10, 12 years old. But uh, what really inspired me to do the coding again is this one, the eject. Once I finish coding this, I click the, because the file is exe file, I click it, it will become a, a real software. Back in that time, we don't call it application, because software. Okay, wow, it's a software. I feel very amazing. Surprise about that. wow, you can do things and you can play music. But once I click this button, the CD ROM just pop up. They really shocked me. Oh my god, I can control role and control things. That's really the first time I feel like art and technology. Of course, I, I, I started art in a young age. My, my dad is a connoisseur, I have an artistic uh, background now. But I, I feel like wow, that's an amazing experience. You control, you, you click, and something pop up. So it's really possible for you guys to do something amazing. As long as you have something feel like, wow, you know, if you design something like, use uh, Steve Jobs' sentence, so insane, right? You have to, that's a standard. You have to think about this, insane, right? And I, I look at the lecture, you guys last lecture. They asked about, they, they mentioned the, the lecture. Talk about what's the next big thing. What you guys have? What's what you guys have in mind? What what do you think is will be the trendy next technology or art and technology thing? What's that? The Google Glass. Okay, I agree. What, what's that? Uh, uh, medical wearable medical devices. Wow, that's cool. What else? Just just pop up any big idea. I did that a lot of times with my teacher. Yeah. It's cool. When you are telling them you're working on something cool, your mind is going in the direction. That means your mind is really thinking. Just just tell me anything you think is cool. Google Glass is working on, so it's definitely within five to ten years it's it's really a trend. Remote programming for household items. Say that again, sorry? Uh, like remote programming for household items. Oh, okay, that's like the, the locker shop. Right? You, you know Rocketron from yeah. Kickstarter? It's like that you're talking about that, right? Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah, you know, actually what I, uh, I talked to Professor Tan before about this class, is called Directive. Um, actually, um, you know, uh, I, I really agree everything needs to be very interactive nowadays. Can you imagine things not interactive, right? You buy a car, you hold the car interactive. You hold a car, the car can tell you where. Tell you the traffic situation, and now people talk a lot about disruptive. 
right? Disruptive innovation, linking the traditional uh, things. But what I summarize for the future is called post disruptive. Stephen Hawking just mentioned one article about the human will need to plan in, within a thousand years, need to escape from the earth because they will, or they will get extinct. That's definitely a, a, the next big thing. So, because, you know, recently Obama just signed a, a bill or something for the scientific research about the brain. So they really go deep into the brain. That's amazing. You know, human can create new. You can't imagine how crazy human can go to. So the next big thing, I call it the post-disruptive time. That's like art history, they would call the post-modernism, homo, you know, modernism, post-modernism. I call it post-disruptive. So, there's no an answer, but definitely, you guys, when you're doing um, UX, you have to really think about the app thing again. App is really happening, so you have to rap, do it rapidly and refine your skill and taste rapidly. Because maybe another five years, we don't use app anymore. We use some like Facebook one, Facebook Home want to get rid of apps. That's really good. He said, you know, our current situation is around app. Our base, our phone is all apps. He, he feel like that's troublesome. So we build a home based on another home. I cannot say that's good or bad, but of course he has his strategy for his company. But for you guys, you have to really think about what kind of app. Is it part of Facebook game? Is it for just another individual app? Cannot change my life. Cannot change your life. Cannot help improve the productivity. Is it just another game? Cannot get popular. You know, you don't have marketing money. You cannot get popular. Or unless you have some cool team. So yeah, if you guys want to discuss some collaboration, you can definitely contact me. So uh, like my sketch storm, and we can talk. So. What's the next correct thing? Picasso gives an answer. Everything you can imagine is good. Augmented reality. You know, in interactive age, we talk about the... Back in the 90s, we talk about virtual reality, right? Looks like, wow, 3D. They use a triangle, period restructure. They can reflect a 3D object. And now, the Yelp and Google Glass is doing the augmented reality. A lot of companies are doing all that. And that's... I don't know, because the 5G network, the fifth generation of the mobile network is coming. You know, there's a company called Broadcom in Sunnyvale, Matilda, near Matilda. They're doing the 5G network, it's real fast. So the augmented reality is really feasible. So that's why I said everything you can imagine is real. It's happening. So after the augmented reality, what's that? That's the terrible thing. That's why I call post this one. Because Maybe the te telecommunicating, all kind of crazy things. You know, everything is real, it's getting real and real. So when you design something, you can work for some company and design something not cool. But in your heart, you have to think about what's next, what's the next. The big thing you might not realize, but if you're thinking in that crazy, uh, like a kid's thing, like a kid's, it doesn't matter. It might get better, and it will become real. Okay, and now it's a Q&A section, that's all the presentation. Today. And if you guys want to take a break, just, just go, go ahead. We can take a break for 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm not giving speed changes tonight. Sure. Yep, so you guys go ahead and take a break and uh, I want to thank someone. Okay, guys, let's start again. So, do you guys have some concern or questions for yourself, for your own business? So feel free to ask me. We can discuss. And with everyone. Are you guys planning to start your own stuff? Well this is a this is a user interface class selected. Yeah. For a lot of us this is our first, oh, the first go okay. at learning uh, from the beginning to the end like okay. what it's like developing a UI. Mm. It, 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 the UI thing, when you talk about it, the first thing is about your client. Who's your client? Who you design for whom? Okay, like a lot of um, company, they would design for GE or Wells Fargo or all kind of banking. Like I work with somebody who, like they are from the fin financial sector. They want your user interface look decent look very classic, 
They don't want goofy stuff. They want black thing. Everything like elegant. That's a financial sector people they like to embrace. So if you're talking about like fashion industry, of course they like the <laughs> dazzle, you know, bling bling. So it really depends. But um, of course, you if you are a designer, it doesn't matter your day one or the ten years later. You are a designer. You are a designer. You can design. Okay, you can embed your person personal style into anything. Okay, just like a designer for like that artist I just show you the Mondrian. His painting can be painted on a car. Some designer, some car designer work with the painter. To work work on a full shape with that painting, so your style can really affect your client. You can tell a client what do you want will be better. That's that's better if you really want. You know, it depends on personality as well. Some people I don't care. You pay me, I do it. You ask me to do whatever you want, I do it. That's one kind of attitude. It's fine, but it will be very hard to grow into a big designer or big company. Every good company, or good CEO, or good designer, they really respect the client, but they do have their own opinion. So you are asking this question. You have to ask yourself, what do you want? Okay. Of course, your client. Like I, I work for NASA. NASA, you know, they do Gangnam style. You know, you do that. Yeah. You can type in NASA Gangnam style. There are people doing that. So they they accept the goofy things. So. Like who work with NASA Tesla, Elon Musk? You know the trip, not Elon Musk, right? What do you think of the Tesla car, the S model, the reason? You need a four door. What's that? The four door. Uh, uh, yeah, just the re reason release of the Tesla. It's their first four door. Right? Okay. Yep. At uh, the first four door. Yep. Yeah, it's their first four door. Yes. Yeah, nice. Sorry. Yep. But but on that car, do you see any other brands influence? Any other car like the, does it remind you BMW or no. uh, Benz? What what I think is more important behind the Tesla is the way it integrates into our world because right now the three things that America kind of needs is more nuclear power, electric cars for the future so we stop using so much petrol, yep. and term limits on representatives and congressmen. Okay. And I think that the people who are thinking about about building a Tesla, they realize the system in which we've been living in. Okay. And that car fits. Maybe not so much aesthetic, like a BMW. It's not going to win awards, maybe. No. Like a BMW would for the aesthetics. It, it's, it might not be car and driver's you know, number one pick for ruling the road and curves. You know what I mean? But... It's the way of the future, pretty much. You know what's so cool you mentioned? Is you have your understanding already. So when you are applying jobs for Tesla, for its UI design, you know what to have. Okay? It's a, you already talk about the energy security and the future. About, about the aesthetic thing, future aesthetic. So you already have your, your kind of vision. What you have to now do now is to to ask your creative director, to ask the other guys from the engineering department, do you, do you agree with me? Like when you're talking about the energy thing, nuclear thing, actually that happens in China as well. They're building more and more nuclear power plant, even after the, the Fukushima thing. Yeah, because coal is even worse. Yeah. So what you're talking about is really interesting to reflect in your design. Because uh, before I come, come to this uh, this class, I I do look it up. The, I I don't plan to talk about the Tesla a lot today, but actually I look at their interface. They have 17 inch the uh, touch screen. Yeah, wow, that's gigantic. Do you know what's the big problem for that? When you're designing, okay, when you're working on iPad, iPads like this size, right? Nine inch or ten inch? Ten inch. You already don't know how to fit in if your apps doesn't have a lot of buttons. You don't you, you don't know how to fit in. Do you want to make an an, an iPad like it only have three buttons? You know, each button like this way. Okay, <laughs> you just want to make a small bit of button. Then wow, that's awkward. 
a big face with a small bum. And how can you work out with that? So there is already some sort of question. When you are working for the Tesla, okay, you waste a lot of space. You cannot just stretch it, okay? Everything must be readable. Like I mentioned, the uh, human language. When you design an interface, you must let the human read it. You cannot make something extreme useless. The, what we reflect is the like the Apple Maps. Do you know what's the result of Apple Maps failed? First, the iOS 6 doesn't really upgrade at the first uh, successfully. They didn't really successfully promote iOS 6. Because of if you update it to iOS 6, your phone will remove the uh, app Google Apps, uh, Google Maps and use up the Apple Maps. But the Apple Maps actually is not that bad. You know, they have some sort of innovation. Just you get used to Google Maps and Google Maps are really a little bit better. A little bit better means a lot. What they did in Apple, you know, they fired the vice president of the software development. Okay, that guy was fired. It's not like he resigned. He, he got fired. Of course, he, he got killed. He asked, they asked him to say sorry, and he wouldn't. Say sorry. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really, it's really, you know, yeah. Like, actually, it's not his. He could definitely, you know, actually, if you look, you use I. Apple, you can see they they, they were backed by Tom Tom or Garmin. I, I don't remember it's Tom Tom or Garmin, but they Tom Tom, right? They backed by Tom Tom. Yeah, Tom, 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 Tom Tom Maps. Yeah, actually, it's not that bad, but just you know, a lot of cultural things. So when you're doing that, how can you do it? Like you are the map department, you guys are fire. Okay, you you design map. Oh my god. So a lot of responsibility about the user interface, about the user experience. If you like the elevator thing, you always make people to click the bell thing. You know, <laughs> that that will create a social issues. So, if you guys have a lot of questions, feel free to ask me. If not, uh, I talked to Professor Tang. You guys can go, and I have a very good movie here. It's called Helvetica. Yeah. Have anyone watched of that? Okay, so you guys have watched it. Okay. Uh, anyone watched the uh, social networking before? Yeah. Okay, so you're pretty much done. <laughs> if you guys are, yeah, uh, that's a, yeah, I, I, I really like those, it's really inspiring, especially the Helvetica. It's about the phones. You know, how important phone? Anyone can tell me, does, do you think phone is important to you? Yeah. yeah. Agree? Do you know what's the most important to, what kind of design? The fonts. Not only the U, U, I, UX design, is to watch design. Watch, you know, they have very limited letters on 12, okay, or maybe the brand. The 12 numbers for a extreme luxury watch. You pay a lot of money. How can you just use the area, right? How can you use the MS Comic, uh, that kind of fonts? But what kind of that's why I like the Helvetica movie. Is it's not promoting Helvetica. It's about how important you choose the right font. So when you're doing the UX, if I want to see if you have good taste or not, it's about font. Yeah. If you meet someone like you use Tesla, okay, you go to see the BM. Uh, I, I, I saw the Benz phones. The 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 screen the touch screen version. I don't know which model. Some model they have it with the touch screen. Maybe all of them. The recent model. They have a touch screen. The phone is really cool. It, you cannot tell what it is. So they maybe hired a UX designer to redesign the phone thing. Maybe they hired a graphic designer to do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter is what phones you call and choose. How long is this movie? Uh, maybe it's hour. Mm -hmm. So if you guys don't have passion, you can feel, feel free to, to go. But if you want to get inspired again, then watch it. It's fine. It's fine with me. <laughs> I don't know if you have to all stay.